Today's video is a deep dive into the risks associated with Tether USDT. Those risks were outlined in the 2024 report by UNODC focused on casinos, money laundering, underground banking and transnational organized crime in Eastern and Southeastern Asia. Without Tether, we'll also touch on other financial crime issues for casinos and underground banking. So let's jump right into today's video. Tether USDT has emerged as a prominent player in the digital currency world, but is not without its risk, especially when it comes to financial crime. According to the UNODC report, Tether is increasingly being used for illicit financial transactions. Its stability and low transaction fee makes it a favorite among cybercriminals and money launderers. Tether pseudo-anonymity and areas of cross-border transaction present significant challenges for law enforcement agencies. The report highlights how these features are exploited in money laundering schemes, often in conjunction with online casinos and underground banking networks. This creates a complex web of financial crime that spans across borders and across jurisdictions. The integration of Tether into online casinos and underground banking system has been a game changer for organized crime groups. So by using Tether, these groups can now easily move large sums of money under the radar of traditional financial institutions. The report points out specific case studies where Tether was used in conjunction with casino transactions to launder money. What's concerning here is the lack of robust regulation in the cryptocurrency space, which allows for such activities still to proliferate today. The report also in fact suggests that enhanced regulatory framework and international cooperation are needed to effectively tackle these challenges. Addressing the risks associated with Tether and other similar cryptocurrency requires a multifaceted approach. The UN OCD reports provide several recommendations. One key strategy is the implementation of stricter KYC and AML policies by cryptocurrency exchanges. One other significant recommendation is the adoption of enhanced global regulatory standards for cryptocurrencies. This, as we know, is uh, quite a challenge that the industry has been facing and uh, tried to achieve for a number of years with the aim to harmonize legal frameworks across countries. This would eventually ensure a unified approach to monitoring and regulating digital currency like Tether. Such coordination is very hard to reach, but definitely a vital one to close the gap that criminals exploit in the current and fragmented regulatory landscape. Additionally, it's crucial for regulatory bodies, law enforcement agencies and the public to be vigilant and be informed. There is a need, in fact, for greater public awareness about the risk of using cryptocurrencies like Tether in online gambling or even other high-risk activities. Educating the public can serve as a first line of defense against financial crime, so feel free to share this video and share the knowledge with your contacts. As we've seen, the issues surrounding Tether and financial crime are complex and multifaceted. The report that I just referenced in this video can give you some great knowledge about how Tether is exploited by criminals, so if you are keen to read the full paper, you will find the link in the video description. And with that, we are at the end of today's video covering financial crime issues related to Tether USDT. If you learned something new today, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more regulatory compliance and financial crime related videos. If you want to support my FinCrem agent project, check out my Patreon link in the video description or feel free to send a super thanks directly from this YouTube video. So, thanks for watching and until next time, see you soon.